Welcome to the Unseminary Podcast. Are you looking for practical ministry help to drive your ministry further, faster? Have a sinking feeling that your ministry training didn't prepare you for the real world? Hey, you're not alone. Join thousands of others in pursuit of stuff that we wish they had taught in seminary. Buckle up and let's get started with this week's Unseminary Podcast. Well, hey everybody, my name's Rich. Welcome to the Unseminary Podcast. We are so glad that you've decided to put us in your earbuds today. I know there's a lot going on at your church, particularly this week. You've got a lot heading into this weekend and uh, we're just so thankful that you would take some time out to listen into today's conversation. Uh, you're going to be rewarded because today we've got a great interview with Jeremy Dagger from Mercy Hill Church. Uh, this church is in Greensboro, North Carolina. You might recall a while back we had Bobby Harrington on, uh, and I loved. Uh, they talked about this incredible thing they call the Weekender, where they uh, they 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 push you know a lot of people through this this kind of week long or weekend long um, you know assimilation process. Well, today uh, we're going to be talking to Jeremy uh, all about kind of next generation or college students millennial ministry uh so jeremy welcome to the show thanks rich appreciate you uh having me on no i'm so so glad to have you now uh i'd love for you to kind of refresh people's minds memory about mercy hill mm-hmm. tell us about the church and then tell us about your role there yeah so uh mercy hill church uh is uh just recently turned four years old uh, we are on the precipice of becoming a multi-site church <laughs> here, and so we're excited about that. Nice. Um, we planted out of the Summit Church yep. in Raleigh, Durham. I know a lot of people are probably familiar with J.D. Greer, and mm-hmm. um, we uh, we had a, an incredible time there, uh, growing uh, both personally and then as a team before we launched. And so, uh, came out of the Summit Church, uh, planted in Greensboro, North Carolina. Um, and over the last four years, we have just seen God do uh, some amazing things. Kind of like Paul talks about in Ephesians, uh, more than we could have asked or imagined. So uh, my role specifically at the church is um, I'm over what we call our age-based ministry, uh, which people point out that I guess means everybody. Uh, <laughs> if you have an age, uh, that's right. Jeremy's responsible for you. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I guess in the church world, we would look at it as family ministry plus college students. Okay. Yep. Um, and so I'm responsible for our kids' ministry, uh, for our student ministry, and then for our college ministry uh, as well. And uh, I have a lot of help, so uh, that sounds kind of like a daunting task, but I have an incredible team. Mm -hmm. Uh, We have a full-time college director, full-time student director, and a bunch of people that are on staff with us in our kids' ministry. And so um, God has, just like with our church, uh, He has grown each of these ministries uh, in a way that uh, has just really kind of blown our mind. And and, uh, it's been really neat to be able to kind of be over that. And what's really helped us uh, align all those ministries together, Mm -hmm. um, having kind of my eyes on all three of them. So uh, it's, been a, it's been a pretty crazy ride, and we're excited to continue to see what God is, uh, is going to do. Yeah, I love that you're, you know, you've got, you're kind of seeing that entire span as really one, uh, one ministry, hopefully you know, stitching together. And I know some churches, they really um, deal with kind of a cliff at the end of each one of those. It's like they have a certain yeah. number of you know, elementary students, and then not all those students convert into high school, and then not all those yep. students convert into college. And then there seems to be a huge drop-off in a lot of churches from college into adult ministry. Um, You know, and there's a lot of fear around like millennials and like, what are we doing to reach them? And uh, so why don't we talk about that, particularly that age group? I know you're doing some pretty innovative, cool stuff with the college age group. I wonder if you could tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so I'll give you a little bit of background as far as what we've seen. Um, When we came to when we came to Greensboro, we planted Mercy Hill. uh, We we knew that there were colleges in the area. You know, Mm -hmm. when you put on your prospectus. It's, you're supposed to put that there are college students, right? That's yeah. like part of your uh, church <laughs> right. planning deal. And so we knew that there was, I think, 80 plus thousand college students uh, in, in the tri- greater triad area of North Carolina. Yeah. Um, but as far as reaching certain campuses, we just thought that there was one primarily here in Greensboro. And, um, and then over uh, the course of these four years, um, we have seen eight di- different campuses um, in the triad area represented mm-hmm. weekly at Mercy Hill, which we didn't plan on that. And so we have close to 400 college students now coming wow. um, to, to Mercy Hill, which is uh, which is pretty pretty incredible. Um, and you know that's uh, that that's kind of what is, is, was put in our lap. And uh, I think early on as a church, when we started seeing college students show up, mm-hmm. um, we we uh, we didn't know exactly what to do. Yeah. Um, and so we just kind of did what we thought you were supposed to do, which was you just kind of put on an event for college students. And mm-hmm. uh, what we realized early on. Uh, it, very early on, you know, in the first year, year and a half of our church is uh, we were really good at the, the organized part. Uh, we mm-hmm. could put on a good structured event for college students. 
Um, and, you know, we were seeing college students come through the front door. We were, we were opening up a door for college students to come in. Problem was, I think, I think what we realized is that we were leaving the back mm. door open. Mm-hmm. And, and I don't mean that as in college students were coming and leaving the church. I just mean they were coming and they weren't meaningfully getting connected to the right. church. Right. Um, and, and, uh, and so I, I remember our, our lead pastor asked me one day, he said, man, he said, the, the event's great. And he said, but how many of these students do you actually know? Mm-hmm. And, uh, and I kind of had to do an honest evaluation. I realized, man, I, we're not really relationally connected. And so mm-hmm. we had a lot of students here, but in terms of meaningful connection, we just weren't really seeing it. And so mm-hmm. uh, we realized at that point we kind of had to make a shift. So, um, so that, that's, that's kind of the story of how, you know, we, what we've seen. Mm-hmm. Well, I think there's probably a lot of people that are listening in that have a similar feeling about college students, maybe. And, and we may think of it, it's, it's just like a stage of life thing, right? Where it's like, you know, students are, they're, they're self-absorbed, they're worrying about their world, they've got exams coming up, they're always... And so, so then we don't take an effort to say, hey, how do we get them connected? And so we kind of let students off the hook and we say, hey, uh, you know, you've got, you know, we're just glad to see you every once in a while. Um, and, and we don't connect them, but what have you done to try to see them get connected? Yeah. So, you know, in that, in that process of us thinking about, okay, what are we not doing? Um, we just went back to the drawing board and, mm-hmm. and we reevaluated it and really kind of broke down to three, three parts for us. Mm-hmm. Um, the first part is we just said, Hey, we, we need to learn how to keep it simple. Um, mm-hmm. I know that, uh, Bobby talked about that. If, if uh, listeners have heard the, the podcast mm-hmm. that he did about us being a simple church, um, and we just kind of went back to the drawing board and said, I think, I think we need to keep it simple. And so we, we just started kind of slashing some stuff. We, we ended up slashing uh, our college event. Um, mm, wow. and, uh, and, and we uh, basically said, hey, we're going we're gonna to make sure that the students know that the big thing every week is our weekend gathering. Mm. Um, and then we want to assimilate them into small group ministry, mm-hmm. just like the rest of the church. Um, and so that was it. That, that, and that's when people ask us about what we're doing to reach college students and we end up telling them, they're kind of like, yeah, but what else? <laughs> and, uh, and, and, but that's, for us, it's a very simple model of, yeah. of helping our students to recognize um, what, uh, what the big thing is. And that is gathering as a local body every week and then mm-hmm. getting them meaningfully connected into small groups. So, so for us, it was slashing things, taking mm-hmm. events off the schedule, mm-hmm. being strategic in the way that we put events on the schedule. And so, uh, we just went through the list of things, and, and we went through the calendar, and, and we just said, hey, we're going to try to keep this thing as simple as possible. Um, but then the, the second thing is we, we were just super intentional. Um, mm. We realized kind of the if you build it, they will come principle. I, I just I don't think it works all that well right. um, in, in the sense that m- maybe they will come, um, but we were building it. They were coming, but no one was getting meaningfully connected. And mm. so you know, you might build it, they might come, but how are people getting, or how are students and millennials in particular, how are they getting plugged in uh, mm-hmm. beyond that? So we just said, hey, we need to reevaluate the intentionality with which uh, we're going uh, about this. You know, I think of it, one story in particular, it's kind of mm-hmm. anecdotal, but we've seen it happen time and time again uh, of a student uh, at a historically black college here in Greensboro. Um, and really, he, it was just him. He started, he was the only student from this school. And wow. uh, we just realized, hey, we're not going to reach this school by building a big event to try to see students come. Uh, and we just kind of rallied around him and we're super intentional for six, eight months with him. <laughs> and, uh, and and out of that, we have just seen uh, tremendous growth from that school in particular. And <laughs> so it just reminded us uh, about the intentionality piece. Uh, practically with that too, you know, intentionality meant we, we needed to get a, a database. Mm. Uh, we, were, we were using Google uh, uh, nice. and, and awesome uh, things that Google provides. But uh, we we uh, at that point around two years into our church, we ended up getting Fellowship One, yep. uh, which was a super practical way for us as a church, but then even as a college ministry and student ministry, uh, to be uh, intentional because we were able to track students and know uh, where they were in the process of getting plugged in, mm-hmm. um, and so that was very helpful for us to be intentional. Mm-hmm. And then the last piece was we just realized we had to close the back door. Right. Uh, you know, I know that Bobby talked about this too, but. We've gained a lot from Larry Osborne, and one thing that he says is that people come because of quality and options, but they stay because of relationships. And so we realized, man, uh, the, the front door for us, the organized piece, we, we got that. You know, opening the door up, creating a really structured event mm-hmm. or, or a program, a system, we have that part. What The part that we don't have is the, is the more organic piece, mm. uh, which is the relational piece that closes the back door. Yep. And so we just started focusing in on closing the back door, and, and what that really meant was 
helping students to see that that what we're about is like I said the weekend gathering, but then getting them in small group. And so, right. you know, our goal is to see uh, you know seventy to eighty percent of the college students at Mercy Hill in a small group wow. relationship. Because um, what we realize is that's what's going to keep them mm-hmm. uh, here. Uh, but not just keep them, but that's what's going to grow them, right. uh, kind of in in uh, in depth. Mm-hmm. Um, and so uh, those are kind of the three things that we did. And, and mm-hmm. once we started to do those things, uh, we've just seen uh, growth both in width and in depth with our students. Now, so, are you doing anything um, like there's the normal assimilation process, which is not a great word, but that's what we're talking about here, getting people plugged into groups um, that you're doing for, say, all of your adult population. Are you doing something specifically for college students that looks a little different? Or is you just kind of calling out to students, hey, uh, make sure you get plugged into a group. This is how you get plugged in. Are they are they student specific groups, or are you trying to go by you know geographical, or how does that work? Yeah, yeah. So um, yes, yes and no. Mm-hmm. Um, we we do student specific groups. So mm-hmm. we have college groups that are specific to students. Mm-hmm. But for the overall assimilation process, again, in terms of keeping it simple and not siloing our ministry. Yep. Because um, I think that's also a danger, whether it be student ministry, or kids ministry, or college ministry. There's always the danger of, of being siloed mm-hmm. from what the rest of the church is doing. We we just said no. That the first step for students, just like with anyone else, you know, whether they're a millennial, whether they're in their uh, 60s, is that, that weekender. And so mm-hmm. our assimilation process looks the same uh, for them. Now, coming out of that, uh, we give the students the option to be a part of a college-specific group, or mm-hmm. they can be part of a multi-generational group. And so in that 80% of college students that we have in small group, a percentage of them are in multi-generational groups because they feel like they would really love to be with people uh, mm-hmm. that are different than them at a different life stage. Um, and uh, and then we have a majority of them that are in college-specific groups. But mm-hmm. we've again, we just try to funnel it all together in right. terms of keeping it simple. Yeah, totally. Uh, saying, hey, we're, we're not going to create all these different steps for different people. Mm-hmm. Um, we're going to streamline everything. And so what we say to one, uh, we're saying to the other. And the great thing with that is when our lead pastor steps up, on Sunday and, and makes the application in a sermon about getting in a small group, mm-hmm. you know, our college students, uh, they're not hearing something completely right. different than what the rest of the people are hearing. Yep. The application is the same for them. Mm-hmm. The next step is the same for them. Mm-hmm. So, and again, I think that's been super helpful in seeing those students actually get connected uh, organically and closing that back door for mm-hmm. them to stay. Now, are the, the students that attend the colleges by you, do they tend to be, are they from across the state, across the country? Are they people, you know, that, that will end up kind of close by you, you know, eventually? What, what does that look like? What's the profile of that student? Yeah, so it's really unique because um, uh, just the demographics of, of the triad area, um, there's so many different schools. So UNC Greensboro, which is right here uh, in our backyard, um, mm-hmm. that's primarily a school that f- that's fed by local Yep. North Carolinians. You don't really meet a ton of students uh, at UNCG that are from out of state. Yep. But then uh, right down the street from us is High Point University. Mm-hmm. Uh, and at High Point University, it's very different. Uh, mm-hmm. Most of the people are from your neck of the woods, oh, nice. um, from, from, from Jersey, from yes. the Northeast okay. area. And so Great. Um, we, there's kind of an eclectic uh, formation of students at our church that are from places like Chicago and from Lexington, North Carolina. Uh, interesting. Um, and one of the things that we've seen is, you know, you know, I think a lot of times when churches think about millennials and think about college students, maybe in particular, they struggle to see the value and the benefit. Mm. Um, and, and and what we've seen is when you learn to uh, open the front door through a good organized system, but close the back door through relationships organically, is it, it, there's an immediate effect on students, which is that you, you get to see them grow and plug into your right. church. Right. But we've we've started now, and now they're into year four. We started to see a long term effect. Where if I look at our staff, we have 39 staff members now. We did a lot of hiring over the summer. Mm-hmm. Um, we have 39 staff members now. Um, I think, if I'm correct, 10 of them are uh, either former students hmm. or wow. current students. Hmm. And you think about that, and you know that's, that's, that's just four years yeah. of our church, and that's because they've. What we've done is we, we've connected them in such a meaningful way um, that they don't want to leave. Right. <laughs> Absolutely. It doesn't matter that they're from wherever. You know, we have a student right now. She's doing a lot of work with us administratively. She's from Long Island, mm-hmm. and uh, she has no plans on going back to Long Island. Mm-hmm. No offense to Long Island. <laughs> uh, I can understand. We've why. seen we've <laughs> seen that, that there is an immediate effect of, of seeing more students plug into your church, but there is a long term effect that I think churches miss sometimes. Right. 
uh, when they don't uh, understand how to assimilate millennials and college students. And that is, you can be, you can build your staff in right. a sense uh, Absolutely. with these students. Well, so. and, and, yeah, let me put it, and you're not saying this, you didn't say this, I'm saying this, So because <laughs> I'm going to say something that may mildly offend people who are listening. I think <laughs> there cool. are a lot of church leaders, a lot of senior leaders, executive pastors that frankly look at the college ministry thing and say, there's no money in that. Why are we doing this? It's those people. Don't, <laughs> there isn't any money in it, Rich. <laughs> yeah, they, you know they're not tithing. Yep. They're not kids who have tithing parents or you know or potential tithing parents. And so I frankly I think that's a part of the reason why college ministry gets starved. But listen, listen to what what we're saying here. You, if you do that, you're, it's a little bit of you're cutting off your nose to spite your face because yeah. you know reaching out to college students is about impacting the next generation. It's about right. saying how do we keep a fresh flow of you know young leaders into the organization whether they end up on your staff or whether they just end up in leadership roles in volunteer places or you know or whether you know 5 years from now they're they're living in in your community and are an active part of this and they're just you know there sure. Um, I do think that we take a, unfortunately, we, a lot of church leaders can take a short term um, view yes. on college students, unfortunately. Yeah, I mean, I think you nailed it right there, you know, and, and we saw this, uh, and this was such a blessing for us to see coming out of the Summit Church mm-hmm. um, and, and recognizing that that church leaders, they have to have a more long term view, like we're saying. Right. You know, we brought with us 10 students that had recently graduated um, from uh, some of the schools in the, in the triangle from North Carolina, uh, from UNC. Um, and, uh, what was really cool is we saw that these students, which, you know, again, you, you think in their student life, not very contributing members uh, mm-hmm. of the church and, mm-hmm. and financially, but what has happened is they have now become an integral part of our church mm-hmm. as young adults where they're starting families, where they are establishing themselves as uh, leaders in the community, mm-hmm. and and now they are significant contributing mm-hmm. members mm-hmm. in our church, and that is because uh, they have learned and understood the value of not just the local church, but your local church. Mm-hmm. You know, um, because they they love your local church because of mm-hmm. what you've done to invest in them, mm-hmm. and so yeah, whether it's staff members, uh, which you know, again, I said we have we have plenty of those, mm-hmm. or whether it's seeing those students decide because I love my local church so much, mm-hmm. I'm not going to move back home. Right. I'm going to stay here, and I'm going right. to plant myself here in this community. Yep. I want my family to be raised in this church. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and what ends up happening is over the course of you know several years, you end up building not just a staff, you build a church mm-hmm. uh, of people that have been with you mm-hmm. significantly. And uh, and so it, you know, for us, it's always been, hey, we're we're planning this church, you know, with thirty years in mind, yes. not three. Yeah. Uh, and if that's the case, then uh, what do we need to be doing to see the sustainability yep. uh, come forward? This is the Unseminary Podcast. Stuff you wish they taught in seminary. Well, we're going to jump into the lightning round, that part of the episode where we ask similar questions of everybody that's on the show today. I'm honored to have Jeremy Dagger with us from uh, Mercy Hill Church in Greensboro, North Carolina, which, by the way, has a very nice airport. I do like the. <laughs> uh, the Greensboro Airport. It's a nice it's airport. Very convenient. Very convenient. Easy to get in and out of uh, if you're ever down that uh, that yeah. part of the world. Uh, so, what's an online resource, Jeremy, that you're using these days that's that's particularly helpful in your ministry? Yeah, I already said it, and, and I don't know if they're going to give me any type of compensation. <laughs> but, uh, Fellowship One is is the uh, is the resource that our church has chosen uh, mm-hmm. as a database. Mm-hmm. Uh, we use it for check in in our kids ministry and other events as well. A- as with all you know technological uh, tools, uh, it, it's certainly got its its frustrations. But overall, we've just learned, man, that it is a it's a pastoral tool. Yeah, absolutely, um, it, it's it's a tool that's not just helpful in in terms of some of the more logistical things. Uh, it's really helpful pastorally in, in helping people not to fall through the cracks. And mm-hmm. I explained how that kind of has played out for us in, in our collegiate ministry. But mm-hmm. uh, it's been really helpful for us to, to embrace that intentional piece uh, and seeing people uh, not fall through the cracks of our church. Absolutely. I was just, uh, just literally yesterday was speaking with a church leader about their database. And you know, they were bemoaning it and were like, oh, I don't know. And, and I said exactly the same thing you said. Listen, you, you've got to get your head around that once your ministry gets beyond maybe 100 people, um, you've got to use technology like a database as a pastoral tool, as a way to, you know, don't look at this as like, you know, it's like some sort of technology thing. It's about getting people connected for sure. It is. And I really appreciate your word on that. What's a book uh, that you've read, I don't know, in the last six months to a year that's shaping your thinking in ministry? 
Yeah, I, I thought of two in particular, and they're mm-hmm. more personal. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we're we've been running at a pretty fast pace for the yeah. last four years. And, um, my wife is pregnant currently with our fourth child. We adopted wow. in these last four, four years. That's amazing. So, um, so for me, <laughs> I've been reading a lot of books that pertain to uh, my my own kind of personal spiritual health. I, <laughs> right. I read Mark Buchanan's book, yep. um, The Rest of God, mm-hmm. uh, and then I've recently finished uh, John Ortberg's book, Soul Keeping, where mm-hmm. he's kind of highlighting uh, the life of Dallas Willard. And mm-hmm. and both of those books for me as a pastor. Um, were uh, hugely impactful yep. uh, for my soul, mm-hmm. which I've realized if, if I'm not, like Orpberg's talking about, if I'm not keeping my soul, I'm, I'm really no good to my family. I'm no good to my church and the people so that, that God has placed me before. So th- both of those books I've read very recently, and mm-hmm. uh, they have been immensely helpful for me pastorally. Mm-hmm. Very cool. What's another ministry you're looking to that's uh, that's inspiring you these days? Yeah, I mean, I'd be remiss if I didn't say the Summit Church. Mm-hmm. Um, those guys have been beyond helpful. I think yep. any church leader that uh, is interested in, in learning how to, to to grow and to to uh, to do ministry well would would uh, would they be served well by looking into the Summit? Mm-hmm. They're they're an open book. They're so helpful for mm-hmm. us. Uh, one other ministry that that's it's a parachurch ministry that we've benefited from greatly is campus outreach. Okay, um, I, the students I talked to you about that came with us, they were with campus outreach and. Mm. I think as we've been able to have a really good relationship with them back at the summit and now here in mm-hmm. Greensboro, uh, we've just really learned a lot from them about how to be super relationally intentional mm-hmm. with college students mm-hmm. and having that long-term view in mind. Mm-hmm. Uh, Campus Outreach has done a great job at, at seeing the student, but seeing uh, them beyond their college years as well. And so mm-hmm. we've just learned a lot from them uh, in terms cool. of ministry philosophy. Very cool. If you could get 15 minutes with any leader alive, who would you want to get that with and why? Yeah, um, I'd say Bono. Oh, uh, nice. Yeah, yeah. I mean, really just because who wouldn't want to say that they spent 15 minutes with Bono? <laughs> very um, true, very but, true. <laughs> you know, I, I, I remember the first time I listened to you too, I thought, man, these guys are incredible. I was probably 13 years old and yep. uh, and I just kind of think about him and, and just the, the iconic figure that he is, mm-hmm. not just in the music industry, but uh, and shaping culture, and, mm-hmm. and uh, so I would I would love to pick that guy's brain. Yeah, absolutely. I'm sure, it's it's a it's a gold mine to be uh, uh, to be mined for sure. Absolutely. You know, it's funny. I was just thinking about it them the other day, and how relationally those guys have been able to hold it together all oh, these years. Yeah, which is pretty amazing yeah. when you think it about is. it. You know, got, creatives. Who you know, Bono's a larger than life personality. The Edge is larger than life personality, and they've been able to say, you know, play where the streets have no name. They've been able to do that for thirty years, no. um, and and still seem to enjoy it. Like they genuinely, when you because I saw this clip where they were all talking together as a band, and I'm like, those yep. guys actually seem like they like each other, which is pretty an amazing feat. Outside of all the music and all that, it's an amazing feat that they can just keep yeah. it together. It really, really is. That's a great point. Nice. All right. Well, in your personal life, when you just want to kick back, relax, what is it that you uh, that you like to do for fun? <laughs> this is uh, this is it's hard for me to admit. I grew up in Philly, uh, mm-hmm. so I'm, I'm a northeasterner. They call me a Yankee down here. So nice. um, I'm slowly uh, I have been slowly become a redneck, <laughs> uh, and so uh, I I like to hunt and fish now. Oh, uh, nice. Which, my family, which all they all live back up north, they they just think I am the uh, anathema. So <laughs> they, uh, I, but I, I love it. Deer season is upon us here yes. in the next couple of weeks, and so um, I, I never thought I'd say this, but you know I have deer fever right now. <laughs> I, can't wait, <laughs> I can't wait to get in the woods, and and uh, I don't, like I said, I'll turn. I, I I own a big truck now. I don't know what has become of me, <laughs> but um, that great. that's what I do. Just sit, sitting outside in the woods. Uh, it's peaceful, and uh, so that's uh, that, that's where where my life is now. <laughs> that's so, great. Well, yeah. Jeremy, I appreciate you uh, so much for being on the show today. If people want to get in touch with you or with the church, well, how can they do that? Yeah, they can visit our website. It's www.mercyhillgso.com, mm-hmm. um, or they can uh, contact me personally. It's just J Dagger D A G E R mm-hmm. at mercyhillgso.com. Uh, I mean, we've learned a lot, but we have a lot that uh, we feel like we're learning. And so we'd, we're an open book to anybody that would like to uh, to pick our brains. Nice. Thank you so much, Jeremy. Appreciate you being on the show today. Thanks, Rich.
Thank you for tuning in to this week's Unseminary podcast. Don't be shy. We'd love to connect. Check out Unseminary Inbox. You can sign up at unseminary.com and we'll send you helpful training resources every week. Plus, you'll gain immediate access to our exclusive members area with tons of resources you can use. Connect with Rich on Twitter at Rich Birch or through email rich at unseminary.com Don't forget to check out the show notes for this episode at unseminary.com It includes links to what we talked about today and more. Leave a comment. We'd love to hear from you. Did you enjoy today's episode? Drop by iTunes and leave a review. Thanks again for tuning in to this week's Unseminary podcast. Join us next week when we'll learn more stuff we wish they taught in seminary. <laughs>